Hi, I'm Lewis Cahill from King & Gasoline. I want to take a minute to talk to you about your fly casting. I talk to a lot of anglers who are interested in making the jump from freshwater to saltwater fly fishing, and they're usually intimidated by the casting. They think, oh, I'm not a good enough caster. I can't cast in the wind. I can't cast 100 feet. I can't come and catch bonefish. Well, I want to take a few minutes to try to clear some of that up and give you a realistic idea of what you need to know about fly casting in order to come down and catch some bonefish. The first thing people get intimidated about is the wind. Now, do you need to know how to cast in the wind to catch bonefish? Well, some days you do. Some days the wind blows and some days it doesn't. But if you're going to catch fish every day on the boat, you're going to need to learn to cast in the wind. It's not as hard as you think. It's really about learning loop control. It's really about learning to make a nice, tight, energized loop and keep the energy in that loop. And we've got some practice drills on the site that will help you but everyone can learn to do it. It just takes a little time invested, and it also takes the right gear. It takes a good line with a heavy head um, and a fast action rod. I usually carry two rods on the boat. I'll carry a rod for windy conditions and I'll carry a rod for calm conditions. The rod I like for windy conditions is my Orvis Helios 3D. It's a nice fast action rod that loads easily, very user friendly for the angler. And the line I like on it is either the Airflow Tropical Punch or the SA Grand Slam. And those lines have good aggressive heads that cut into the wind, but they also have long rear tapers that help you control that head on the longer cast. And to me, that's really important. So get out to the park on some windy days and practice your casting. Practice making tight loops. You'll be fine when you get out in the wind. The next thing people get intimidated is about is distance. Do you need to catch a, cast 100 feet to catch a bonefish? Well, absolutely not. Have I caught a few fish that way? Yes, I have, but it's almost like a lightning strike. You very seldom catch a fish at that kind of distance. It's a good trick to have in your bag, absolutely not necessary. More important is being able to make a short shot. You will catch a lot more fish casting 30 feet than you will casting 100. That's a pretty common shot in bone fishing. They're hard to see, they sneak up on you, and sometimes you don't see them until they're right there at the boat. And it's important to practice that and learn to use that short rod stroke and load just the tip and make a nice presentation to a fish that's 30 feet away. Now any flats guide will tell you that their perfect client is a guy who can cast 60 feet accurately all day. That guy's going to catch a lot of fish, right? That's what everybody wants. So if you can do that, if you can hit that zone from 30 feet to 60 feet, you are golden. Accuracy always important no matter what kind of fishing you're doing. One thing that I see guys do a lot is they go out to the park and they practice with hula hoops and they put the fly in the hula hoop and they train themselves to cast where they're looking and then what happens is they get out to the flats, they see a fish, they look at the fish, they cast and they bonk the fish on the head. So I recommend when you practice going out and taking a pool noodle or something longer and lay it out like it's a fish and practice leading and crossing that pool noodle. And that helps build your target picture and helps you learn to make a good presentation to a fish. That's super important. The other thing that's important and possibly the most important thing in saltwater fly casting is to be able to turn your leader over fully. That is super important because that helps with accuracy and it also helps you not have slack in your system so that you're fishing right away and the first time the fish sees the fly it's moving in a lifelike manner and that's important. There's a drill I love that's called a pick up and lay down drill. We have a video on the site for it where you go out, put out 30 to 40 feet of line, and you just pick the fly up and put it down, and pick the fly up and put it down. And what you focus on is landing the fly before anything else. You want the line and the leader to come perfectly straight and the fly hit the ground before anything else. And if you can learn to do that, you can learn to straighten that leader out when you're out on the flats. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and bang your fly down into the water when you're fishing, but it is important that you learn to turn that leader over, and that's a great way to do it. Another thing that is worth putting some time into learning to do is a back cast presentation. If you can accurately land the fly behind you as well as in front of you, then you can hit fish quickly on either the left or right hand side of the boat, regardless of whether you're a left, whether you're a left or right hand caster. And that's a great skill. That will truly put you on a lot more fish. So I'll leave you with this thought. If you're interested in making the jump to saltwater fly fishing, don't put it off. You don't know what you don't know until you get out there. So book a trip, get out and practice, come down and catch some fish. Think of your first trip as a learning process. Don't get upset at yourself if you blow some shots. Everybody blows shots. 
best anglers blow shots. It's going to happen. Be patient with yourself. Get out and get the experience and learn. If you're really serious and you're really interested and want to shorten that learning curve, come join us at the annual Bonefish School. I come down three or four weeks a year, bring anglers down here, teach them to catch bonefish and be self-sufficient anglers. I'd love to help you. Thanks for tuning in to Gink and Gasoline and stay with us for more tips, tricks, and how-to.